So here's our monthly table. I've only got a few this, uh, this meeting. I didn't remind you guys, sorry about that. Uh, plus, you know, the, it's getting colder. The mushrooms are waning a bit. So uh, anyway, let's go through these. Um, first one from Adele O'Dowd. She found this in Glover Park Woods. Um, actually not a mushroom. Uh, I, you may have seen this out there. Um, this is actually a myxomycete. So this is one of the slime molds. Uh, you can see it's kind of got these veiny, it's kind of like an amoeboid thing. Um, these veins can transport the nutrients that it's collecting um, and move them around the large, larger organism. And if you see up here, I've kind of tried to zoom into this portion of the picture. Um, I am calling this one Fuligo septica. It looks like it's starting to create the, uh, the fruiting type bodies up here. Um, and so it's gonna create that kind of fluffy looking, why they call it dog vomit or scrambled egg slime. So this is one of the myxomycetes. We had somebody come in and um, had these in Petri dishes and it's really cool. Um, we were looking at a dissecting scope and you could sit there and watch it. And if you watched it for a minute, it would be transporting the nutrients in those veins a certain direction. And then all of a sudden it would, it would be like pulsing and you'd see it stop and then it would start pulsing the other direction. So it would be able to distribute the nutrients throughout the entire organism. It's kind of really cool. Anyway, so that's Fuligoseptica. Um, it'll turn into like a brown, fluff and mulch, you'll see it oftentimes, and that's that's it's creating its spores. So that's kind of like its fruiting body. All right, so this one was from Adam Cap. Uh, this is grown from oak. Um, it could be a couple of things. I think that this, uh, he said he didn't really get a feel for it. So you remember we had our talk on Ganodermas. Um, a lot of time they're gonna be more lacquered and they're gonna have kind of a shininess to them. Um, I think that this actually might be uh, an Ishnoderma. So if he would have kind of give that a feel, if he would have seen if it was mushy, that may have been what this is. Although if this was a lot firmer flesh, it, it may be a Ganoderma, but I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards Ishnoderma. Um, kind of hard to tell just from pictures and not having it in your hand, but what can you do? All right, so this one's submitted by David Lee. He initially thought this was just some sort of weird polypore uh, growing up in a tree. Um, couldn't really tell. It looks kind of like it's smooth. And I, I told him, well, why don't you get a little closer picture? And once he did that, you can see it's got these spines on it. So this is another of the Harissium. This is growing on some oak tree, I think, or something along those lines. Um, and so some of the Harissium, I'm not sure if there's a couple of different kind of varieties out there, but it's almost like some will grow short spines and I'm not sure if those spines will eventually elongate and some have a have the longer spines as they grow. Um, because it seems like when you find, this looks like a pretty large specimen, um, it'd be interesting. To, we were gonna try and sequence one of these and see if it showed up any different than say a longer spined version. It could just be an age though. It, maybe over time, if the conditions are right, these spines are gonna get longer. Um, anyway, that's a, a very good edible if you can find them lower to the ground. Although once they start getting this kind of brownish coloration, they end up being a bit um, bitter. Um, but it is a, a fairly easy, this is probably, you're not gonna see anything like this. So this is, if you do find this, it's gonna be one of your easier edibles to identify. And um, they tend to like colder weather. So this is why we've been seeing a few uh, Hirishium lately. This one was submitted by Estella Waldman. She found that in Brighton Dam in Brookville. Um, 
fairly nondescript little brown cluster of mushrooms here. Um, kind of hard to tell what it's growing from. Um, once you look at the underside, um, some people might look at that and say, hey, that looks like a cortina, but it's not. And a cortina would be growing on a cortinarius. It's kind of like a partial veil. It's kind of cobwebby. There are a couple of other mushrooms that'll do that. Even honey mushrooms will have kind of a little cottony veil when they start opening up. Um, I think this is actually Satharella pulluliformis. Um, I can't be certain because we, we don't see any spore coloration developing because they're too young. Um, but I've found these, this, this um, cottony zone around the edge of the cap is, is a pretty good indicator of that. Um, if we were to let that get a little older and take a spore print, um, that would probably be a better confirmation and we would see kind of like a darker, um, a dark, not quite almost blackish uh, spore print if it was the Satharella. So this was submitted by Isabella Farr. This was found in September. She found that in Fairfax. I had this um, in an older email. Um, I've been kind of trying to look around and see if I can figure out what it is. I have not been able to put a species name on this. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to, to put it in the chat or send me an email or something. Um, although this is a coral, so this is a Romaria species, I believe. Um, pretty little thing. Uh, I really don't know what, uh, it's kind of cool, Romaria. Um, they're in the gum, Gumphidiaceae. Uh, we don't really see too many Gumphidias here, Gomphus here. Um, I'm, I was kind of surprised to find that it, it was actually in that grouping, that family. Anyway, sorry I can't get you any further on that one. Um, last one here was one I found over in the Patuxent Research Center. Um, so you've probably seen lots of little mushrooms like these uh, grown from wood, um, sometimes from leaf litter and things like that. So this is a little Mycena. Uh, it's a little bit more descriptive when you look at the stipe. You've got this orange, I mean, yellow coloration. The cap has a little bit of yellow to it. Um, this is, uh, it was grown from conifer wood. Uh, and if you look at the Mycenas grown from conifer with the yellow stipe, it, it's Mycena epipterygia. I have a hard time saying that one. Um, connecting back to last uh, month, this apparently uh, does have some sort of bioluminescence about it. I didn't know at the time, um, and I'm not sure what portion of this does glow. Um, I wish I would have known when I found it. I might have tried to bring more home and look at it in a dark room or something. Um, anyway, that's all I got this time. Um, maybe next month I'll, uh, we'll see if we can find some polypores and crusts and we'll have a table talk. I mean, there's not gonna be many fleshy fungi depending on how cold it gets. Um, so, Anyway, you'll get an email from me shortly. Uh, we'll have a foray probably in a couple of weeks, um, see if we can find anything, and then we'll have the table ID. Um, anyway, thanks to you guys for sending me pictures, um, and that's it for me. Take care. <laughs>